Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Benitez. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Today, we're starting a new series that I called Grace, the Antidote to Religion. Grace, the Antidote to Religion. Now, if you have not checked out the previous episodes or the previous series, I should say, um, it's called What is Religion? What is Religion? Because a lot of times I've figured this out, that a lot of people automatically, when you say, oh, he's religious, or when you think of religion, you automatically think of either someone who, A, who, isn't, who doesn't wear makeup, B, who uh, doesn't even drink coffee, maybe he wears like a black robe with a backwards collar, maybe he abstains from, you know, this or that. You always think of external things. He doesn't do this, or he's religious because he doesn't do that. But being holy isn't being legalistic or religious. You have to understand what religion truly is. And I'm not going to get into it because we did a two-episode series on it. And uh, I was joined with two special hosts. Go check it out. And we kind of just, we just hit it at different angles. But to summarize it, religion is not necessarily... Um, a different set of rules. Or he's religious because he doesn't uh, get tattoos. Or she's religious. She doesn't wear makeup. Or he's religious. He doesn't wear any type of graphic tees. Like these little things. But that's not really what religion is. You have to recognize and look in the Bible. Look in the Bible. Look what look of look who Jesus called religious. Look at who Jesus called the hypocrites and the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, those who are religious. It's not it doesn't even matter. Someone can be fully tatted up. Someone can have a sleeve of tattoos like I do and still be religious. Or someone could dress super modest, not even drink coffee like Andrew Womack. And him not be religious at all. He's free. He's, he ain't religious. You see how it, it's man thinks, the Bible says that man judges on the outer appearance. So being religious, you have to go deeper. It, it is not the external. You can be religious having a full set of tattoos and drinking coffee, drinking kombucha. You can be religious and someone who dresses modestly someone who does who abstains from certain things whatever it is he could he could be far from religious so what is religion and we talked about it but i just wanted to to summarize it because we're going to be talking about the antidote what is the antidote an antidote is the uh the definition an antidote is a medicine uh, taken or given to counteract to counteract a particular poison Religion is poisonous. In fact, Jesus Christ called the religious people of his days, you, you brood of vipers, snakes. What do snakes have? They have poison. You brood of vipers. You don't, uh, you don't enter into the kingdom of God and you, refu you, you refuse for people to enter into the kingdom themselves. So the antidote to religion is grace. So what is religion? Religion is, in simplistic terms, is is man trying to get to God in his own way? Is man trying to do something, works, trying to do something, fast, tithe, pray, this. You fill in the, you fill in the blanks. Man trying to do something to attain the favor, the blessing of God, the anointing of God. Is you trying to do something, your own works, your own legalistic works, Man trying to do something to get to God, to God's favor, to God's blessing, to God's hand upon his life, to open doors, to an open heaven, quote unquote. It is, it is man needing to do something. I need to do this or I won't be blessed. I need to tithe or there's going to be a curse on my life. But in reality, the Bible says that he has redeemed us from all the curse of the law. So you're telling me that God has redeemed you from every curse, but will place a curse upon you for simply not tithing? You see, religion puts fear upon you. Religion puts, uh, it, is, it is what man uses to manipulate, to control people. Religious people control people out of fear, out of, out of, out of debt, obligation, condemnation, and guilt. So religion 
is you trying to do something. You trying to to do A, B, me trying to fast, trying to pray. I need to fast for two days before this crusade in order for souls to be saved. You see, you see how selfish you think about that. That's a good example because I used to do that. So what you're telling me is that you're fasting, not God's saving grace, not God's faith, not, not, not simplistic faith in the finished rock in the finished work of the cross. Your fasting is going to produce that. You see, religion is man trying to do something, man taking the glory away from God, saying it is my works that has caused me to be blessed in this life. It is my works that has caused me to have this ministry. It is my fasting, my praying, my setting apart. It is because I, 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 I will will be like the most high God. That's what the devil said. So religion, it is man imposing. You got to be holy. You got to fast. You got, you got to pray an hour a day with intensity. You got to, you got to sweat when you pray, bro. You got, you got to, you got to fast twice a day, once a day. I don't care if you, if you don't want to, you do it out of fear and control. But in reality, you're stuck in religious bondage. You're stuck under the law, which the law was never even for Christians. The law was given to Moses for Israel, the nation of Israel. The, in fact, the Bible says, for you are not under the law, but under grace. How clear is it that you're under the law when you think that if you don't tithe, you're going to be cursed? You see, this fear, I, I'm, I'm simply peeling back the layers of the onion because I used to think this way. I was caught up in works. I could never do enough. I needed to fast. I needed to pray or else I'm not or else the hand of God is not going to come on my life or else the, the anointing is going to go away or else God is going to look away from me. But in reality, what happens is that is that religion attributes fallen characteristics of man onto God. You think God is like man, but in Numbers 23, it clearly says God is not a man. So you think that because you make a mistake, because you sin, God is going to turn his unconditional love. See, God, religion says that God's love is not unconditional. It is conditional. What does that mean? I must do this in order for God to do that. Some people call it covenant-minded. If I don't do this, God is not going to do that. It's conditions. It is, it is the philosophies of this world. It is, the, it is man imposing laws, ordinances, religious empty practices in order to get God to bless you, to favor you, to open doors for you. And you'll get stuck in this hamster wheel until you humble yourself and realize that you're stuck in this bondage, in deception. That Galatians, Paul talks about, in essence, what we're talking about today. Who hath bewitched you? You started out in the spirit of grace, but now you are made perfect by your fleshly works. So in... And I'm, I'm trying my best because I don't want to just talk about what it is because we did a whole broadcast on it. But you need to understand that because a lot of people, and this is a this is a a fallacy, man. Let's let's go to the scripture. Let's go to Ephesians chapter two. Is that a lot of people think, or they are saved by grace. They are saved by putting faith in the finished work of the cross. What is the finished work of the cross? But, but, but it is the grace of God. It is Grace is what God has done independent of your actions. By grace, God uh, sent his son into the world to die for you without you even being aware, without you even being born yet, without you even committing one sin, God died for you. Grace is, is God doing something independent of man's actions or works. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 4, But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace 
in his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Listen to this, verse 8. This is the third time that grace is being mentioned. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you have to understand this. A lot of people, and, and I was one of them, you fall into this religion. And honestly, the devil's, one of the devil's greatest weapons is religion. The devil has no power. He has been destroyed, according to Colossians, Ephesians, all over the Bible. Hebrew says that Jesus Christ destroyed, he, he died, that only by dying he can destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus Christ destroyed the devil, took authority over, over him, took his authority, destroyed him, stripped powers and principalities, spoiled them. They have no power. All they have is deception and lies. And my friend, the devil uses religion as one of his biggest ploys of deception upon Christians. Because this is how I used to think. And if you're listening, I mean, if you're still listening at this point, then you have an open heart. Because if you had a hard heart, you probably would have clicked out. Because what I began, how I opened up was, was a little bit strong for religious people. But you have to humble yourself. The Bible says that it is only by meekness that you will receive the engrafted word of God, which will deliver your soul. In fact, twice in the New Testament, the Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. Only by hum humility and meekness, will you will receive the word of God and it will produce deliverance in your life. So we just read that the Bible says, for it is by grace you are saved. And then again, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is, a, it is the gift of God. So we are saved. When we come to Christ, we are saved by grace through faith. What does that mean? We are, we are saved by believing. It's actually His faith, but that's a whole other teaching. It is by believing faith in His grace. In fact, Romans chapter 5, I believe it's verse 21, it says that we have access to this grace by faith. You look at Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham was preached the gospel and he believed. He believed in what? He believed in God's amazing grace. What is grace? It is God's, God doing something independent of your actions. So the Bible says that by grace you are saved. By grace through faith you are saved. And, and you look at, let's, let's go to Colossians. Because a lot of people, and like I said, I was one of them, that yes, you're saved by grace through faith. But I mean, I've heard this literally from the pulpit. Yes, you're saved by grace through faith. But afterwards, you better get to work. Not a, Yes, you're saved by grace. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith, believing in His grace. You, you trust in the goodness of God, even while you were yet a sinner. Christ died for you. That's grace. But after you're saved, you better get to work and you better produce or the blessing of God is not going to be on your life or you're not going to be favored by God or fill in the blanks. But in Colossians, it says, as you have received Jesus, as you have received Jesus Christ the Lord, Walk ye in him. It's Colossians 2, verse 6. Listen to this. I'm going to read a couple of translations. Colossians 2, verse 6. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives. Continue to follow him. Walk ye in him. King James says, as, you there, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. As you therefore have received received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. What is this saying? The same way that you received Jesus Christ as Lord, that is the same way you're supposed to walk your entire Christian life. That's how you're supposed to walk in Him. You walk your this Christian walk the same exact way that you received Him. Well, how did you receive Him? We just read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. 
By grace, you are saved. By grace through faith. How are you supposed to live this Christian life? By putting faith in His grace. Here's a good temperature check. I heard a man of God say, Pharisees, the minute you even mention the word grace, they cringe. They, you, they begin to demonically manifest. Why is that? Who else didn't like the who else did not like? Who else did the Pharisees not like? Jesus. What was Jesus full of? The Bible says he was full of grace and truth. And, and of his fullness, John chapter 1, we have received and grace upon grace. So Christ is full of grace and truth. In fact, the Bible says of his fullness. What is he full of? Grace. Of his fullness. We have received grace upon grace. I was, I was just like that. If anyone, I mean, ask my wife, anyone ever said the word grace, man, I would like manifest. Um, I, would, I would be like, yo, what are, you, what are you talking about? And yes, I'm not saying that grace is a license to sin. It is not a license to sin. Grace actually breaks the power of sin. I'm just going to set that out there uh, uh, on the record. Grace does not give you the license to sin. Grace is the power that breaks sin in your life. But I'm not going to focus. Uh, I'm probably going to focus on that on another episode. But I want you to really see this. So, I, But I want to set the record straight that grace is not a license to sin. Grace actually breaks the power of sin. You have to recognize that. But why is it that the minute you mention grace, the hypocrites, the Pharisees, ah, he's a hyper grace. Why, 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 bro? Why? Why are you so opposed to what Jesus Christ is full of? Of his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. Jesus Christ, the Mosaic law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4, the throne of grace, who is sitting on that throne? Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne. And the Bible says in Hebrews, he calls the throne which Jesus is sitting on, the throne of grace. In fact, Galatia, I mean, I can, I can rattle off scripture after scripture after scripture. Paul, the apostle who wrote the majority of the New Testament, Acts chapter 20, verse 24, he said that I, I, is now I go bound in the spirit onto Jerusalem, that I may finish what God has called me to do, to preach the gospel of, great, of the grace of God. Galatians chapter 1. I marvel that you have so that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ Jesus. If any man preach any other gospel than the gospel which I have preached, the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24. If anyone preaches anything other than the gospel of the grace of God, let him be accursed. And again, I say, if any man preach any other gospel than the gospel which I am preaching to you, what gospel? Acts chapter 20 verse 24. I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem that I may preach the gospel of the grace of God. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that has called you into the grace of Christ Jesus onto another gospel, which is not real, which is not really another gospel. Let him be accursed, the Bible says. Chapter 3, the same epistle, who has bewitched you? O foolish Galatians, you fools, who has bewitched you? That you started in grace, but now you're made perfect by works. So you have to recognize that there is a deception. Yes, we're saved by grace through faith, believing in His goodness, believing in the finished work of the cross. What is grace? Grace is the antidote to religion. Grace is what destroys religion. Grace is what God has done independent of, God, of man's actions. Go with me to Romans chapter 11, verse 6. Another foundational scripture that you must like open these, every scripture that I'm talking about, write it down and look at it for yourself. Romans 11, verse 6 says, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it's by works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What is this saying? 
If by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. This is a clear distinction. In other words, it's either grace or works. It can be grace mixed with works. That's what the Bible calls a little leaven. A little leaven is not talking about sin. Read the context in, the, in, in Galatians. What is it talking about? The law. The works of the law. You got to do this to be blessed. You got to do this or else God is, he's going to turn his head, or, or his favor away from you. He's going to turn his hand upon, you know, he's going to look for someone else. Bro, that's bondage and religious doctrine. You see, and here's the thing, that people have attributed fallen man's characteristics of conditional love. If you don't do this for me, I'm not going to love you. Well, if you're with me, I love you. If you're against me, I don't love you. But in fact, the Bible says that while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. God is not a man. Numbers 23. You have this. This is 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 the breaking point is that people think that God is a man. People think that if I don't if I don't perform for God, he's not going to perform for me. Faith does not move God. Faith is simply believing and trusting in what God has already done by grace, by what by grace what? Independent of what man has done. It if it's by grace then it is no more of works. And if it's work, then it's not grace. You have to understand that. It, you're, 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 it, there's a line being drawn here. That's why the Bible says, you who have trusted in your works, you have fallen from grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is what God has done independent of you. In fact, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 talks about the manifold grace of God. There's many folds to it. Grace is also the empowerment of to be what God has called you to be, an evangelist, a pastor. You're, you're an evangelist by the grace of God, not by what school you've attended, not by who you're under. You're an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, an apostle, a prophet by the grace of God. 1 Peter 4.10, as every man has received the gift, a gift is not something that is earned or worked for. Otherwise, it won't be a gift. It'll be a debt that is owed. That's what it says in Romans chapter 5. Man, there's so many scriptures, man. As I rattle these off, I pray that you would begin to, to think about these things. Look at the scriptures for yourself. Because I used to be this way. I used to be a Pharisee. I used to think that it was my fasting that produces the anointing. I used to think that if I don't fast, if I don't pray this much, then God is not going to use me. I used to think that in order for me to see... Uh, when, when we would only see like 10 people saved in our crusades. Now, I was a man. I need, to, I need to see over 100 people saved in our crusades. I need to fast. So what? It, you're saying that your fasting is going to produce that? You're falling from grace. You're trusting in your works instead of trusting in the finished work of the cross. So grace is the antidote for religion. I mean, I'm probably going to take like six series on these or six episodes on this because there's so much to it but this is just an introduction hebrews chapter 4 now therefore there remains a rest to the people of god it is you not trusting in your works new you try not to perform for god trying to be this theatrical performance performer for God in order for him to move. Faith doesn't move God. God has been sitting on the throne. The Bible says on the sixth day, he finished all of his works in the in Hebrews. And he he's done. He's not moving. Faith doesn't move God. Faith doesn't provoke God to do anything for you. Faith is trusting what God has already done. Hebrews, I'm um, sorry, let's go to Ephesians chapter one. Faith rests. Now, he that has, the Bible says in Hebrews, he that he has ceased from his works. What does that mean? He who has, refer, who has stopped, who has ceased from his works, enters into the rest, the same rest of God, the same rest that he did, the same rest that he finished everything he needed to do. On the sixth day, on the seventh day, he entered into rest. He, we, therefore, that believe do enter into the rest of God. Therefore, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. What is that talking about? Re that is ceasing from your works. That is, you tr stop trying to perform for God. 
In fact, anything that you, this is, and I'm telling you, whether you're tithing out of fear, whether you're tithing out of obligation, whether you're, 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 you're preaching, because whether you're fasting, trying to fast to produce something, trying to get God to move, trying to get, trying to get the, the windows of heaven open for you. But in reality, the Bible says that it is the preaching of the gospel that manifests the power of God in Titus. So you have to recognize that when you begin to move away from grace into works, you become exhausted. You don't receive anything from God. If you would be honest with yourself right now, there's people out there that have tithed faithfully to the penny for years and have not received a return. Why? Because you're doing it out of obligation, because you're doing it out of fear that if God does, that if I don't do this, God is going to curse my finances. That is it. That is a blasphemy because you have to recognize that the Bible says that God has redeemed us from every single curse of the law. So you're telling me that although the Mosaic law was written to the nation of Israel, I'm under it now when the Bible clearly says that we are not under the law, but under grace you have to recognize the deception of the enemy and when you and, and if you continuously tithing 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 out of fear out of obligation out of control out of manipulation it's not going to produce anything where is that in the bible first corinthians chapter 13 verse 3 write that down that if i give my body to be burned if i give all my goods to the poor but have not charity it profits nothing Zero. There is no return from it. If I give out of fear, out of obligation, out of control, out of manipulation, it profits me nothing. I will see nothing in return. And if you would be honest with yourself, there's people out there that have given faithfully, that love God, but because you've been manipulated by religion, thinking that God will place a curse upon you because you don't tithe, that when you tithe, you're actually nullifying. You're voting out your gift because you give not cheerfully, not out of love. Therefore, the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. If you don't give out of love, it profits nothing. So if you are giving faithfully, but in, but in fear and control and obligation, you won't see a return. And there's many, many people out there. I've talked to countless Christians. I don't know why I'm not seeing a return. And then, and then you would have the audacity to say, oh, it's because you're not doing more. And then, and then you have Christians just in a continuous hamster wheel over and over and over. But you have to recognize that every single thing that God has already done for you outside of your works, you receive your inheritance by grace. That is why you're not receiving your inheritance because you're trying to do it out of works. You're trying to do it out of fear. You're, you're, you're doing your soul winning out of fear. You're not giving out of, out of love and you won't, and you, you won't. Receive it because God will not share his glory with anyone. God will not share his glory with any man. So when you, in order for you to receive your full inheritance, you need to receive everything in the kingdom of God by grace outside of your works. I'm, am I telling you not to fast? No. Am I telling you not to tithe? I'm not saying that. I'm telling you it is a, it is a posture of the heart. How, what are you, why, what is the motive behind it? And I'm telling the reason why I'm so passionate because I used to be caught up in the same exact cycle. That the minute you stop relying on the grace of God, you begin to take glory for your own thing. It, oh, it is my, it's my holiness. It's because I fast once a day. It's because I read so much. Because I tithe. I don't miss a tithe. I don't miss a church service. I don't miss a a conference, I mean, whatever service that you, you want to put it. It's just, we've literally replaced, and people think because you're not offering goats and sacrifices, that you think that you're not religious, but you've literally substituted sacrificing goats and animals for other religious ordinances. I'm not telling you that tithing is bad. I'm telling you what what is their motive behind it. Are you causing people to be in fear? Are you putting them into bondage? Why are you soul winning? Why are you winning souls? Do you really believe that it is the love and the goodness of God that brings one to repentance? Or do you believe I need to soul win in order to please man? Or rather yet, please God. He's not going to, he's not going to give us a child because I haven't been soul winning, because I haven't been tithing. You see the bondage that, that you come under. So you have to recognize this. You have to. You have to. 
The Bible says the same exact way that you, we have received Jesus Christ the Lord, so ye walk in him. How did you receive him? By grace through faith. Faith is not you doing something to move God. Faith is simply your positive response to the grace of God. The grace of God is what God has done independent of what your, of your works. Newsflash, you don't got to fast for the blessing of God to come upon your life. Ephesians chapter 1, let's read that. Let's start at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Past tense. It's a done deal. What is that? Grace. God doing something independent. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us already. It's done. You've already got it. It's a done deal. So why are you trying to work, perform for God to bless you when the Bible says you are already blessed? The Bible says that you are accepted in the beloved. You know the other, the only other uh, wording that this is used is in Luke chapter 2 where it says, uh, Mary, you're highly favored. That word accepted in the beloved is the same word that was used for highly favored. What are you trying to do to be highly favored? You're already highly favored. You're already blessed with all, not some all spiritual blessings. You're blessed. You're highly favored. The prosperity blessing has had the God. God has already commanded the financial and prosperity blessing to come upon your life. You have it. You just don't know that you have it. So you think you're trying to get something. So what do I need to do to get blessed? My friend, you're already blessed. You are already highly favored. You are loved. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing. You have already deliverance, prosperity, salvation. Salvation is so-so. Complete wholeness. Complete deliverance, healing, within, without. You're healed in your body. You're healed in your mind. You're healed emotionally. You're delivered from every bondage. You are free. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Except a curse, a financial, a financial curse because I don't tithe. How does that make sense? Malachi wasn't even written to Gentiles. It was written to Israel. And a lot of people fail to neglect, uh, fail to to, to read the entire passage. It says you have robbed God in the tithes and offerings. So all you, all you do is you nitpick a specific scripture and says, oh, because you haven't tithed, you're cursed. But the Bible does, didn't stop there. It didn't say tithes and, and that's it. It says tithe and offerings. So if you, you want to stick with that logical the, theologic, theological gymnastics, then you're going to say that it's because you haven't tithed and offered. So you're telling me that if I don't tithe and offer, then I'm cursed? Why do you why do you fail to to read the entire scripture? That's not that was written to Israel. The Old Testament was to Israel. We're not under the law but to grace. People don't understand that you think that as a Christian you're under the Old Testament. You're you're not supposed to obey the 10 commandments. You're not under the Old Testament law. You're under the new covenant of what? Of grace. The Bible even calls this the dispensation of grace. The church age, the the dispensation of grace. This dispensation the Bible says, what dispensation is this? The grace of God. The Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Well, God was in Christ, no longer counting people's sins against him. He's not counting your sins against him. But, pe but people will call that blasphemy also. But the Bible says that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, 21. How, how, how is it? This is, the, this is the dispensation of grace that we are in, where your sins have been paid for, past, present, and future, by one offering. He has perfected all them who are sanctified by one offering. That is grace. That is God himself doing what he, what he, what he willed in himself to do independent of your work. And in the next episode, I'm going to wrap up right here. 
But in the next episode, because I feel there's a lot of people even getting free. There's a lot of people even listening to me that, you know what? Yeah, you're, you're right. I've, I've come under condemnation. I've come under guilt. I've come under this law-based mentality. Yes, I'm not offering sacrifices to goats, to animals, but you're right. I feel guilty if I don't fast. I give out of guilt and fear. I fear. I, 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 don't, I don't have love. I don't have peace. I don't have rest. But the Bible says, he that has ceased from his works enters into the rest of God. Therefore, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Hebrews. So you have to, and we're going to talk about that in the next coming episodes. But I wanted to take this first, this very first episode, that grace is the antidote. We read, what is antidote? The medicine that counteracts a poison. Religion is a poison. Jesus Christ called the religious people of his day, you Pharisees, you brood of, of vipers. You do not enter into the kingdom of God and you reject those. You refuse for people to go into the kingdom. You don't go in and, and you resist people. You don't allow them to go into the rest of God. You don't allow them to receive their full inheritance by grace. You don't allow them to be at ease, to be at peace. But you call, you put them into bondage, in, into religious control. That they, that they have to work. They have to be in this hamster wheel. Or God is not going to accept them. Or God is not going to use them. Or God is going to turn his, his anointing away from them. You can't. The Bible says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You are blessed. You are favored. You are loved. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in, ha- in heavenly places. For God has redeemed you from every single curse of the law. Every single curse. You cannot be cursed. You are you are uncursable. So tell me, how does this fit in with if I don't do this, God is going to be mad at me. God is not a man. God's love is unconditional. That while we were yet enemies, while we were sinners, while we were ungodly, Christ died for you, for me. God's, God is love. That is who he is. That is not an attribute. That is not a characteristics. That, that is who he is. That is his true nature. First John chapter four, God himself. He is love. That is his very substance. There is no love outside of God. It is unconditional love. It is that while you were a God hater, while you were a sinner, while you were an enemy of God, he loved you and died for you. And the Bible says now, much more that we are now that we are reconciled unto God, we shall be saved from wrath through him, through his life, through eternal life, that God loved us while we were enemies. And now that we are sons of God, now that we are accepted in the beloved, tell me what do I have to do to get God to bless me? Nothing. He has already blessed me. That is grace. That is independent of your work. So I want to end it here because the next couple episodes, I'm going to, I'm going to try to calm down (laughs) and and I'm going to, we're going to go through scripture. I mean, I gave you at least like 30 scriptures right now, but we're going to go, I'm going to focus on specific elements of of the grace of God because the Bible calls it uh, first Peter chapter four, verse 10, the manifold grace of God. God, uh, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the empowerment. It is the very power of God, the spirit of grace. We love to use this verse in the Old Testament, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Read the next scripture. It says that you will see a mountain and you will yell, you will shout to the mountain, grace, grace. Read it. It's in your Bible, in the Old Testament, foreshadowing the grace of God, foreshadowing Jesus Christ, the Messiah, full of grace and truth, the throne of grace. Who sits on the throne? It is Jesus Christ himself, full of grace, mercy. So the next couple of episodes, we're gonna I'm gonna get into the manifold, um, or the manifolds of the grace of God, because it there is m- many to it. Great, like I was mentioning earlier, grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the power of God, the spirit of grace to be by the gift of God an evangelist, not because you need to do this, do this. Do, no, you're an evangelist by the the day you are called. It is a gift, not of works. You know, when you're stuck in religious uh, works, you're literally taking the glory away from God and attribute it to your own works.
So grace is not a license to sin. Grace is the empowerment to become an evangelist and to do the work of whatever office you're called to do. Grace is the unearned favor of God. Grace is what God has done independent of your works. So I want to end there. And I want you to stay tuned. I want you to, I want you to really, and if this is challenging you, it challenged me when I first heard this, but I'm at every single scripture, I want you to write it down. Rewind this. Maybe lower it down a little bit because I know I was I was a little bit uh stirred up. But write down every scripture that I've said. Look into it for yourself. The law has been destroyed, Ephesians 2.15. That he abolished, destroyed the law by his flesh. Look that up. Begin to meditate on what I'm talking about. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Or will you receive the truth and be set free? For it, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that sets one free. So some people are content in their deception. Some people are content, comfortable in their own bondage. But... I have a feeling if you're still listening, that's not you. Because if you're still listening after everything that I've said, the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart, telling you there's more, telling you that there is a rest for you. There is a rest for the people of God. There is a rest for your life. There is a peace. There is something, there is love. There is now no condemnation. Take my yoke upon me. My yoke is easy. If you're burdened down by religious works, look at the amplified version of that. If you're burdened down, take my yoke upon me. It's not talking about the yoke of the word. It's talking about the word. He talked to the Jewish people at that time. To it, come on to me, all ye who are, he, who are weary and heavy laden from religious works. And take my yoke upon me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There remains a rest for the people of God. There is more to this. There is, there is a different way. You know what I'm talking about. Because I know this truth is bearing witness with you. The Holy Ghost is bearing witness to this truth. And if you would humble yourself and receive the truth, you're either going to bow down to man and their religious doctrines and stay stuck, or you're going to receive the truth, be set free. Receive the truth and be set free. So I want you to stay tuned for the next episode. The next episode, we're going to go into different facets. We're going to talk about the rest. We're talking about the, the empowerment to be, things like that. Because it is a manifold grace of God. It is only by the grace of God that I am what I am. And it's only by the grace of God that you are what you are. Not by your works, not by your fasting, not by your prayers. And if you were like me who were who was just exhausted, and I'll tell you, I, I, I probably live a more... And I, I don't say this out of arrogance. I'm just telling you it's because people, are, people, the devil has used religious people to say, oh, when you talk about grace, you're talking about a license to sin. Grace is not a license to sin. I probably live more separated than the majority of people listening. I don't, I don't even watch TV. I don't, I don't do any of these things. But it is by the grace of God. Grace is not a license to sin, but it is the rest. It is the empowerment. It is when you find the great, when you find grace, Noah found grace in the sight of God. Moses found grace. Abraham found grace. Enoch found grace. But you believe and you trust in the grace of God. You trust and not in your own works. You don't trust in how holy you are after the flesh. That means nothing. It doesn't matter. I can live, I can live, be, I can go on a mountain and live so separated, but it's still not going to uh, recompense all the wickedness that I did before. So I don't trust in, in my own flesh. I don't trust in the works of the flesh. I trust, I have faith in the grace of God. By grace, we are saved through faith. Romans chapter five, you have access to this grace. How do you access grace? People will tell you, you gotta do this. How, how does that even make sense? I, let me tackle that lie and then I'm gonna log off. How, how do I get more grace? Well, what's the definition of grace? I just told you, unmerited favor, unearned favor. Romans chapter 11, verse six. And if it's by grace, then it is no more of works. And then someone tells you, you ask someone, how do I get more grace? Which grace is 
You read the scriptures. It's without works. Romans 11 verse 6. And then they'll tell you, you got to work and do this. How does that make sense, bro? You're telling me, I'm asking you, how do I get unearned favor? And then the preacher answers, you earn it by doing this. Have you lost your mind? Are you a teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? You receive grace by faith. Romans chapter 5, you have access to this grace by faith. Through knowledge, peace and grace is multiplied onto you, not through works. But we'll get into that on in a different episode. But I just wanted to debunk that lie. I really wanted to have this episode to really almost like a, a C4. Because <laughs> I, honestly, I, I wasn't expecting to for the Lord to go into that direction. But it, this is like a C4. And if, you're, and if you've received it, and God is calling you to more. Come up hither. And God is, God is calling you to more. And uh, stay tuned. The next couple episodes, we'll get into it. Grace brings rest. Grace brings empowerment. So I want to leave you guys with that. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And then one last thing, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, just go to our website. All the information should be on the link or the description. We're on all different platforms. Sign up for our newsletter. Why? Because I'm not going to put junk in your email. We'll put resources. I have a team. And we're going to be sending out like uh, video devotionals, email devotionals, uh, different things that are not just going to be like fluffy fluffs, but they're uh, they're going to be uh, spiritual meat. There's a man of God that I follow that, man, his, his like email devotionals are meat to a point where I would sit waiting for my haircut and I would be blessed just listening, just reading like a two paragraph devotional. So we'll be sending resources to your email. There's a lot of crusades that are coming up right now in Los Angeles that we're going to be doing. Um, it, it's going to be a wildfire in the best sense possible. I want you to stay plugged in. Sign up for our newsletter. And lastly, lastly, share this. Share this on your on your story. I want us. I want you to. I want to see your notes. I want to see what you uh, got from it. Share it and set people free from religious bondage. Love you guys. See you in the next one.